This is the edit button. Today I'm reading Tomato Soup. This is a treatment for a trailer style short in the old school faux feel of a Hammer House horror from the 1970s. Come with us if you dare. Or a schlocky B movie from the 80s. It's gonna be interesting as well because I will be deleting many of my notes as I go through here because I was too harsh the first time through. He was closer to the mock than I gave him credit for. I feel like that this was close enough between a scriptment and a treatment that the writer should just commit and write this short out. It would have been maybe 12 pages rather than the six that we're reviewing today. Extract one, exterior, suburbia, day. A creepy house, lightning strikes and flickers in the background, ellipses. This is my war on ellipses. Often I find that a hyphen is what's required and ellipses is not. In dialogue, it's used as a dilation of time. So in action, it should also be used as a dilation of time. And so when I see a lot of it, you must die. Everybody must die. Everything about it looks fake. It appears to be looking at a model of a miniature town and a bad homemade special effects. Announcer, voiceover. It comes when you least expect it. Ellipses. The black here is being used as transition. So transition, right side justified. Title card, dot, dot, dot. I'm not sure about the dot, dot tomato soup the tomato soup. The title liquefies and drips off the screen as a hand reaches inside the fridge for a box of tomatoes. It's a good to actually transition between um, black uh, and, and opening a fridge. Close on tomatoes, um, evidently mutants open up little eyes, monstrous eyes. So if this was a treatment, he can take full license here to expand what he's trying to do. Just take the time on the page to speak exactly to your examples. If it's tongue in cheek, then I'd argue double down everywhere in what homages he's doing, which trailers in particular, the effects that he's using are coming from. A man with shaggy hair and a mustache takes drops the box. At the stage in which this is a pitching document, there's no room for grammatical errors. So uh, another pass really has to be taken to clean up. Oblivious, the shaggy-haired man drops the tomatoes inside the mixer and turns them into mush and eventually soup. I'd say blender instead of mixer. Powers the propeller, I think it's a blade. Um, so the English is a bit awkward here. I feel like this might be English as a second language for the writer. So I'm taking a bit of care to point out the more English vernacular. Yum, yum. Into the mixer, he punches puree. Might be a bit more visual. It's feeling a bit process heavy. If I was editing this, I need to see who's receiving these actions. His schlocky 80s template is only going to work if we see reactions of these magical eyes, these Muppet eyes that have appeared on this tomato as he goes to press puree. I don't know if that's an evolution on what he's trying to do, but for the audience's perspective, it's absolutely paramount that we see reactions to what's going on here. So those eyes will go super bright and react to the fact that they're about to be blended. We'll get to watch them whip around a bit. It'd be great to see them on the page. A TV's on in the corner of the room, old black and white movie, dot, dot, dot. I've just told the writer that he can easily tidy up this widow with a bit of word economy. Meanwhile, redundant word, the soup boils inside the saucepan over heat. So he's already established a motif of jumping to black. We could jump to red and then see bubbles up from the red. In the next shot, we see a man taking. So this is a bit procedural. A transition or slug line will help the gap here and avoid this prescriptive direction. He takes a seat. So again, like what do we see? We know it's the next shot because there's been a transition. You just need to tell us what we're looking at rather than that we're about to look at something. A couple of evil eyes snap open. So I reckon this might be stronger to have the eyes appear before the sheer terror. Worth mentioning that the previous interior scene didn't have a scene heading, just an inconsistency on the page. They don't need to be correct. Polish the shit out of this thing. Make sure that all the devices that you're using are formatted consistently. Warm water fills a tub, thick layers of white foam, a rubber duck. A hot blonde in a silk robe combs herself facing a giant mirror. Guy with a beard got three times the level of description as a hot blonde. It's a bit disingenuous. It is to the style of what he's writing. He's right on brand here, but 
people have to be able to stomach the next two pages. So it would be great if he just stayed consistent the way he described the man when he describes the woman. Ominous two note theme from Jaws sounds. I would recommend that he removes this entirely. Hammer Horror trailers didn't have these types of music cues. He's already set the tone. He's put an entire cut at the front of the script that says where your head should be while watching this and what you should be recalling. Oblivious to all this, the hot blonde dips the tip of her foot into the bathtub. So this could all just use a bit of a tune up. It's a toe. She dips her toe, toes at the tip of your foot. So she dips a toe. And then I just felt the next couple lines were a bit too clunky. Visibly satisfied with the temperature, she shuts off the running water, drops her robe and gets in. Visibly satisfied and satisfied are the same thing. So it's redundant language. Um, there's just some word economy here that's required. We also might want to be parallel actioning the threat here because we've established the setting and we know she's sort of getting in, but where's what's ominous? Where's the threat? It's all warm and comfy in there. Her giant breasts like icebergs, the nipples digging their way out of the foam. I'm not crazy about the line. I think uh, the fact that he's doing an homage from the 70s and 80s stuff, it's a little bit more 80s schlocky than it is Hammer Horror, although Hammer Horror was not innocent of this either. It could be better. It just needs a tune-up. In fact, I'm just going to change the color there. Uh, fin surfaces is entirely. I would argue that you make the fin red. And then the announcer comes back. It's not parallel with the action we're seeing. But again, if it's if this is cut fast enough, it's going to work. Title card, a fruit. Great. So again, it's um, consistency. We didn't see a title card earlier that paired with the voiceover. And I think we should. Uh, the hot blood snaps out of reverie and finally makes eye contact with the creature. You see the monster's head and a cheap one of that coming out of the water, teeth barred. Into your living room, continuous. The creature chases the girl around a sofa. So we've jumped out completely of the two motifs that the entire trailer is trying to homage. This is a Benny Hill moment, so I say it hits the floor. Okay, um, extract three. Exterior, suburb, day, the tomato monster versus a giant mecha robot. And so it begins. Again, you're breaking the fourth wall, telling us how to interpret what we're seeing. The visuals should do this on their own. Like often I find when a writer has written POV, the next line of action does the work that the POV does, and so it's no longer required. Giant steps, boom, boom. The world, capital W, the robot, AT, makes its grand entrance. So we've fallen into legal language here that is totally not required in any way, shape, or form in a screenplay. State the robot for robot, state the monster as monsters, state the tomatoes as tomatoes, characters as characters. You don't need to abbreviate them. Announcer continued. I'm a big proponent of turning continued off in your screenplays. Continued in more. I don't think they're required. On cue, title splatters on screen, so we've got the same motif as before, as long as it drips off later. Tomato soup. Title card, coming soon. Coming soon, and sooner than you think. That's actually a really good line. I felt like this could be a very good vehicle for an animation house or someone in visual effects, where this could really show off their work and his work. So he'd get credit for writing the thing that showed off the style of someone else interpreting Hammer Horror and Schlocky 80s. What comes to mind is Played you too. Someone is about to talk. The terrible cosmic death. Easter, the mad misunderstood professor evil maniac. Just a portfolio piece for motion graphics. He is in space. What are we waiting for? With mighty battle cries, our heroes leap into battle with battle cries. This pairs very well with style over substance type materials. One thing that I think it does show off is this writer's ability to assimilate voice. And if he just polishes the dialogue a little bit, I think he'd double down on that and we'd all be very impressed. Oh! 